Hello, hello, hello. Today we're gonna talk about the BS02 Skybreaker, aka the last night Megatron. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to Dreamsons. Today we're gonna do a comparison and open box review with the UTR03 and Deformation BS02, the KO version. But before this, I have to say thanks to Woody from the Mega Dreams Museum Enterprise. He's the one who borrowed me the UT03 figure for this review. Although both here, in this video, I will mainly focus on the BS02 Megatron. In this video, I will do a deep comparison, check out all the detail between two figures and also I will do some modification for the BS02 including the head scalp, the shoulder and the legs. Just make sure you stay until the end. Alright, without further ado, let's start from the box first. The unique toys box designed and printed in a really good quality. The color is more to the dark and finished with the metallic silk. Not only the front, even though the back of the box, it looks stunning. Definitely premium quality. On the other side, the deformation box is straightforward and simple. Just one artwork included the front and the back. If you look closely, you will realize not only the figure, even though the artwork, the side section of the face mask is still hidden. I will show you how to get it out later. Both figures come with the plastic clamshell and the identical accessory included the arm cannons, the seal and the iconic sword. The only difference is the unique toy come with the UTR02 Optimus Prime upgrade head scout and the BS is come with the exchangeable face scout. The first difference we see is, is the color, and second is the scale. UT is about 32 cm tall, and the BS just about 30 cm. Both of these figures look stunning, and obviously the credit have to go back to the original design unique toy. On the BS figure, actually added a lot more detail. Let's get a closer look. We compare start with the Battlemark hair scalp. Although BS is the KO, but he's not just copy, he actually re the whole new head scalp. Not only the paint job, the shape and detail, it definitely has been improved. Compared to the original Megatron CGI, it's definitely value added. Not only the head scalp, even though the chest size, compared to UT, the BS figure looks a lot more complex. Although a small area, I do really like the detail they added on the arm. It's really simple, but it looks great. I'm really impressed they are not only improved their finger articulations, they actually added more detail. But only one part I don't like, in the middle of the finger there's a hole, it looks hollow. We can see all detail improved from the side skirt and also the shoulder sections. And at the back, on this whole top section is a new mold. Compared to UT, the detail is a lot more solid. The BS figure not only detail added and reside, and also most of the use of materials has been changed. The most obviously is the front skirt. The material from original UT is harder and more solid. And on the BS, the material he used is a lot softer. But one thing is, the front skirt detail on the BS has molded a lot sharper compared to UT. They both come with the transformation instructions. I'm not gonna open the UT one, but I can see there's an instruction menu and a card there. And the BS1 is simply like a booklet. I think it printed quite clear and the instruction was quite okay. And especially I like it, they do indicate with the red arrow and also they do have some highlight on gold. And next, let's compare with the arm cannons. Both of the arm cannons, except the paint job, it look identical. All detail is really really close, even though it looks like they use the same quality of metal chain. It look like almost the same size, but actually the UT1 is slightly longer. They both have a LED lighting effect and the battery compartment setting are the same. Only the UT button is black and smaller. But the UT1 doesn't come with battery, so I can only show you the BS1. The red LED is really really strong. Just make sure don't point it straight to your eyes. Here we have both of the saw. The UT1 is slightly longer, about 25 cm, and the BS1 only 23 cm long. On the BS versions, it's not just only downside, it actually they have made it the whole new mode. 
The detail has been added. On the body, you can see a lot of spark there. It looks really cool and really evil. I really loved it. Compared to the blade, it's just slightly smaller. On the holder, actually the BS version is slightly wider. At the body sections, the thickness is about the same. And next, let's check out the shield. Both of them look great and quite close. The BS mode, they go more simple and rounded design. But surprisingly, they're about the same size. It's actually longer on the BS versions. When you flip it on the other side, you will see both of the picks are designing in a different way. The UT version is a fixed position pick, but in the BS, it's a ball joint based pick. So it allows you to anchor to different positions with a more flexible pose. On the UT Megatron actually also come with this UT R02 Optimus Prime replacement head. The upgrade head definitely looks more bulky with a great improvement with the sculpting and the paint job. The only downside is it is not come with the LED eyes like the one before. But there is give and takes. Now you can just simply open up and swap the face mask to the regular face. Compared to the previous with the LED light version, you need to open up and then replace it. And actually I much more prefer the new upgrade head. When talk about head sculpt, the BS version had added the LED light functions. It looks great. It seems like in the transformer figure nowadays, when you have LED eyes, it's definitely value added. And about the transformation of the head sculpt, the UT version is really straightforward and simple. You can just pull it up like so and rotate. Simply transform the battle mask to the face sculpt. Compared to BS versions, because there is the LED light battery compartment, so you need to open up and swap the face in order to do so. And I have to mention, I really like the way they add the manek. It's really easy to remove and you can just simply light up, they will stay on the place. And one thing I don't understand about BS, when you do a transformation like so, basically we just remove the battle mask and swap to the face mask, it should done the job. When you thought this complete, it's not. Surprisingly, there is a heating part. What you need to do, you have to remove and unscrew the whole thing to get it out. That means every time when you transform to face mask, you need to open up the screw. Because of this, a lot of people missing to transform that hidden part. Or maybe just leave it like this. I'm not sure why they designed that way. Is it design fault or the problem from the manufacturer? We don't know. Luckily, before I get this figure, I already noticed. I have to say thanks to the Facebook trans fans and other YouTuber who done the fantastic modification about this figure. I have listed the link below. You can also check it out. Because of that, I will do my way on the custom modification about this figure. It will help easy to do the transformation for the future. First, we need to unscrew and separate all parts. On this side section, as you can see, the pick design is fixed position pick. It's limited the rotations. I want them to able to rotate, so I don't need to unscrew the side sections every time when I'm doing the transformations. I use this drill tool to drill away the side wall inside the hole. Instead of fixed position, I will make the hole as a round shape, so that it's able to rotate like so. And the good news, after you rotate the section under the head sculpt, it is not affected the rotation of the better mask version. You will notice when you've done it both sides, it's a lot easier. Simply just flip it up and put the mask on, there you go. I'm not sure why the BS didn't do this on the first place. Or maybe there is something I'm missing about. If you know, please leave the comments below and let me know. When you compare with the original UT and the CGI Megatron reference, you will notice the side panels are not open wide enough. So that will be my second modification. The cause is simply because of the back section of the side panel is too thick. I simply use a cutter to cut it and scratch away the extra. Use the edge part as a guide. Just make sure you don't overcut it. After doing this, you can simply see the result has improved tremendously. Although the BS head scalp neck part is a ball joint, but I think the movement is still limited and a bit too loose. There is a couple ways to fix it. One of the way is cut away part of these sections and make it more space. But I prefer the other way, it's working on the neck part ball joint sections. Open this part, you can simply unscrew the whole sections. But take your time, the screw might be a bit tight. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna cut away a piece under the ball joint. But no worry, because the neck part is quite thick, after you're doing that, they still can hold well. As you can see, this is a section I cut away, that's all what we need. And you can see the result immediately. Now the head can tilt out further. To tighten the ball joint, I have applied a thin layer of super glue to make the wall slightly thicker. Make sure you wait until it dry completely. After I put the head on, the head are stay more solid compared to before. After the head side modification done, we can compare the unmasked face detail. 
The UT is close to these CGI versions. The emotion is a bit friendly and smiling. At the same time, BS come up a totally different face. He's showing his teeth and string his eyes. It looks a lot more evil. Both detail it looks great, but emotion wise, I think BS done a great job. After the head, I am highly recommended to do the multiplication on the shoulders. The BS shoulder has been limited. Compared to the UT, the shoulder can bring back because of the joint. And here is the problem, the edge of the joint is square, so it won't allow the joint to fall back. I'm not sure why the BS version will change this part, because it doesn't help or affect the transformation at all. To fix this, all you need to do is cut away the corner part to the round shape, until you can fold it in like so. After you've done that, you notice that the arm is more poseable and it drops down more natural. The next I need to fix the arm. The one I get, the arm is too loose. The problem is it will not able to hold anything, including the saw or even the shield. On this part, you can see a mushroom pick. I drop a bit of super glue inside and then you have to make sure you keep rotating. During the super glue getting dry, the arm becomes stiff and then the joint will go tighter. After this, you will see the arm will hold better. This is a very useful tip for all loose ball joint or mushroom pick joint. After the shoulder, the arm and now the wrist, it is really loose. And also, we can see when I pick in the saw, the pick is doesn't pick in completely. And the thumb is a bit too loose as well. The wrist is based on mushroom pick and I use the same method, added a layer of super glue on the section I want to make it more tight. And also, in the weapon hole, as we can see, there's some level of molded plastic there. So I have to clean it up in order to get a saw pick, pick in all the way. I also added a thin layer of super glue on the side. Just want to make sure it can hold the saw pick nice and tight. When the super glue dry completely, I can assemble the whole hand. And now we can see the wrist and the thumb is nice and tight. After that, the pick can hold the saw and the wrist is stronger. I'm not sure the figure you get are having the same problems. Although they have a larger joint, but it's just too loose, I will need to fix it. First, we move the back skirt out of the way, open up the thigh and rotate these sections and make it more space. And we need to remove all the screw on the upper joint. And after that, you can remove the whole section and the whole leg. And then we need to remove this screw and this is the part we need to fix for the loose larger joint. Carefully disassemble whole pieces. As you can see, the section who hold the spring are too deep. Or you can say the other way, the spring is just too short for these sections. So what we need to do, we need to fill up the gap in order to raise the spring. What I'm using is the UV light glue. I'm highly recommended because this is very useful. First, I apply the glue in the gap equally. Try to fill up only half but not full. And then I use the UV light for around a minute. And they become dry and solid just like raising in a very short time. And now when I put on the spring, as you can see, the spring has raised up. It means it will be definitely stronger to hold the ratchet. After that, we can reassemble the whole sections. As simply modified, you will see the ratchets become so strong. Make sure don't overdo it. If they are too tight, you can unscrew it a bit to adjust the tighter of the ratchet joint. Before you join the whole leg together, you can actually try to see how tight you want. If you need it, you can always set it tighter. Till you're happy, you can assemble the whole fit. And now here is the difference. Again, this is a very useful skill. You can apply to all the ratchet joints from different figure. After the whole modification done, all I can say is nice. Alright, let's quick check out the articulations. The head is based on ball joint. It can be rotated, but they've been limited because of the side panel sections. After the modifications, now the head can tilt out a bit more. And also, because of the transformation need, the neck joint can slide to forward and backward. And the shoulder section, also based on ball joint, can lift up and rotate to different directions. The whole shoulder arm can be rotated 360. And then after modification, now they can pull back. If you want to get more, try to open these sections and now the arm can go backward a bit more. The arm can tilt up like so with a very good ratchet joint, can be rotated 360. The ratchet joint elbow can be bent more than 90 degree. If you want to do more, you can try to rotate the bicep. There is a double joint you can use the most of it. Now the whole arm can be completely fold together. 
This is optional, ideal for you to enhance to do any pose. And also, when you put down the shoulder panel, it will be totally cover up the screw and the hole. It won't show too overishly. Compared to UT, the BS versions has upgraded the fingers. Now all finger can be articulated individually, and also the wrist can be rotate 360, and an extra joint on the wrist that you can fold it in. And the waist can do a full rotations. On the side hip skirt, they do have a spring functions. You might need to angle up and collapse it to store on the side. And the front hip skirt, they also have a joint that you can open up and tilting up and down. And the legs mainly based on the ratchet joint, but the front tilting has been limited because of the front skirt. And it can be rotated back all the way like so. The leg can be split up, especially after you modify the ratchet joint, the leg can hold a lot better. The knees joint are die cast and can be tilted up like so. And also the front of the feet section and the toes are made from die cast, can be tilted up like so. When come to the articulation, the feet is the weakest part in the whole figure for articulation point. Even though the side tilting can only do a little bit. I am mega Alright, here we have the UTR02 Ultimate Primes compared with BS. Everyone say the UT Dragons is a bit too tall, but how about now? In the visual wise, I quite like the scale. What do you think? Please leave the comments below and let me know. Alright, let's try something new. And next, I have the Tactic Waistcoat, the Bumblebee Movie Ultimate Prime. They are about the same tall. Although it's not from the same range of movie, both of them look good to put on together. And next, we compare with the ZV-02 Flash. One of my latest repaint project, the Zeta Toy Blitzwing. It's come of different generations. On the design, they might have a generation gap. And last but not least, we have to compare with the Honey Badger MPM-8 KO Megatrans. And surprisingly, not only materials, even though the paint job is really close on these two figures. Alright, next, let's do the transformations. First, we open up these sections and release the chest section. Open up the back sections, slide the head to the back and rotate. Release the torso sections and open up the shoulder sections. Open up the upper chest and release the jack nose. Open up, flip it over and join them together to form the jack nose. Under this section, when you flip over, you will see the landing gear. The original UT is die cast, but this one, it changed to a kind of soft plastic. You need to be careful when you fold it out, because it might bend. And next, we need to release the top sections and fold the chest together. As you can see, there is a pick there and a hole. You need to join them together to lock it in place. And now we can unfold the whole sections and also close the carpet sections as well and flip it over like so. As you can see, in the middle, they do have a slot joint. What you need to do, angle up this way and push it up one by one. There's a pick on top of these sections and there's a hole. Line up together and lock it both in place. And on this section, angle up both in these directions and leave it there for now. Leave up the side hip skirt and rotate open up all the part inside. The shoulder part horn has the spring. When you fold it up, the horn will push in itself. And we do the same on the other side. Open up the hip skirt and all the parts and leave it there for this moment. Before we lock it in place, we need to work on the lower sections. Split up the leg like so. In the middle, they do have a back hip skirt. What we need to do is release it and rotate all the way to the front and angle up the both front hip skirts underneath like so. And now we can lock this side. As you can see, there is a slot here. What you need is line up correctly and then push it in. They should lock it in place nicely. And then side, you can see a pick and a holes there and simply just push it in. And it will lock the whole top section on place. If you've done it correctly, this is how it looks like. Now we work on the back sections. First, we move the hand on these sections and now we need to work on the most difficult part on these transformations. Release the knees joint. Open up the thigh section like so and rotate these sections. 
On the sci-fi section, you have to rotate this way, like so. Now we start working on the feet. Release these two soft plastic sections and open up these panels. Rotate both of them in the same angles and join them together. And next, we need to split the leg in three sections. First, we need to release the pig there and then you can simply open up and release all sections by three parts. And unfold these sections like so. Open up for more space. Make sure you align the five fin on top of the section like so. So we can collapse this section inside. Before we collapse it, this is what we need to work on. Fold it in this way. Rotate it like this angle and fold the feet down. And this five section can be opened up like so. Just slot in all the way. Make sure the feet are going to the body like so. And then on the side, you will see there's a pick and hole there. Simply just push and lock it in place. And then we can release these sections. On the top of the engine part, there's a pick there we need to push in. If you've done everything correctly, it should be lined up in place. Simply lock all the pieces at once. And now you can unfold this part, open all the panel and join them together to form a wings. And then we now start working on the arm. Fold the arm down like so and tilt the side at the same time. As you can see, there is a pick on the arm and there is a hole just right underneath these sections. So simply just line it up and pick them together and lock it in place. And now we can push this panel all the way rubbing the feet. And there is a pick there. We can simply push it down and lock it. At this section, there is a pipe or gun there. Make sure you tilt it up and then pull it out. On the top part, you can see the hole and pick there. Simply just fold it down. They should lock it in place. And finally, we have the right side transform complete. And this is how it looks like. And now we need to do the same on the other side. Release the knees joint. Open up these panels. Rotate these sections. And rotate the whole panel like so. Open up the feet. Line up together and join them together. Release the pick on the leg and split it to three sections. Open up the front panels like so. And then we can do the wings first. Open up all panels to form a wings. Fold the feet like so in these angles. And we can start slot into the jet body like so. Line up correctly and lock all in place. Rotate the arm. Fold it like so and angle up this way. And then we can lock it in place. And this panel, we wrap around the fist and lock it. And then lock the top part as well. Open up the fins on side. To complete the jet mode, we need to add the arm cannon on top. Fold the pick out, line up and push it down. They should lock it in place. And next, we lock the chain, go all the way under the arm shoulder part and push all the way in. And pull out the gun at the back. I think that's done. So far, this is one of the transformer figure. After you've done the transformations, you don't need to check is there any gap because the gap is all around the jet mode. Based on the measurement of my table map, the whole Megatron jet mode is about 42 cm and the width is about the same, around 42 cm as well. Because this jet mode in the movie is only appear for a few short time, so far I like it but I didn't have much connection with it. The whole jet mode look great, I only can compare with some of the CGI concept art that I found online. So is it accurate with the movie? I'm not sure but it looks good though. What do you think? Please leave the comments below and let me know. Just like a bot mode, on the jet mode, UT version is slightly bigger compared to BS. Except the molded plastic color and the paint job, they're not much different on the both figure. I think the major change is the landing gear and the nose of the jet. In UT, they are full die cast, but the BS just change it to plastic.
Alright, here is the conclusion of the BS02, the KO version of UTR03, aka The Last Night Megatron. After I play with both with the transformations, there's no doubt Unitoy plastic and materials is definitely better. Although the BS has remained some of the die cast, imagine when I get the figure I need to do a lot of modifications to make it perfect. Think about it, some of the people they are not able to do so or maybe they don't have time or skill etc. So for me to say, is it a good figure to get? It's really up to you. If you already have the original UT versions, keep it, you have nothing to lose. If you think about to collect another one who's down scale and more detail, alright, here is the options. At the end of this video, I will show you guys the transformation from the jet mode to boat mode. Thanks again for staying until now. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and share to your friends. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you won't miss the coming soon video. I'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.